And now for our last story, as the engines are getting ready to celebrate the Golden Jubilee. Back in the autumn, a spider had found a warm corner underneath the signal box at the junction. She had woven a web, pointed at one end and shaped like a funnel, and for a while she lived very well on what she had caught in it. Now it was spring, and the spider had moved on. She knew nothing about the preparations for the Golden Jubilee. It's going to be a disaster, remarked Henry gloomily. Important people, a special train, and nothing for them to see. Ugh, you old misery, said Donald. Look on the bright side. There's a way to go yet. I'm sure it will be all right, put in Daisy. She had been shy about living in a big shed at first, but was getting used to it now. Of course it will, agreed Duck. Have you ever known the Fat Controller's plan to go wrong? No, admitted James. I've never known that. The other engines agreed, except Henry. There's always the first time, he muttered darkly. But by the time Jubilee Day arrived, Edward's wheel and Thomas's branch line were both mended. The fat controller told Edward he was to run ahead of the special train to make sure that the line was clear. Does that mean? he asked excitedly. Wait and see, smiled the fat controller. Crowds began to gather at the big station. There was to be a red carpet, speeches, and a special luncheon for the visitors. Last time we had a red carpet, the Queen came, remarked Gordon. As the special train drew to a halt, Emma grinned happily at Edward. Got your four lamps arranged? she asked. Off you go then, we'll follow in a few minutes. At the junction, a breeze blew into the room beneath the signal box. It wafted the old spider's web between two electrical contacts. At once, everything in the signal box stopped working. Signals went to danger. Points could not be moved. Now what? exclaimed the signalman. There's a royal train due in five minutes. Edward stopped outside the signal box. Thomas, Percy, Toby and Mavis were already waiting. The electrics are dead, Sir Signalman told Edward's driver. We shall have to flag you all through, but it will take time. You must go first, then the royal. Carefully, men with flags send the trains on their way. Edward went first with a letter for the fat controller, telling him what had happened. Pip and Emma went next. Finally, Thomas and the branch line engines were allowed through. At the big station, the crowd was now enormous. The fat controller looked impatiently at his watch. Gordon, Henry and James had got the best places at the platform. We shall see everything from here, said James happily. If there's anything to see, grumbled Henry. Just then, they heard a whistle. That's Edward, said Gordon. He had a wasted journey, poor engine. But we know Gordon was wrong, don't we? Pip and Emma soon drew in, and onto the red carpet stepped a royal personage. I apologise for the delay, sir, said the fat controller, and he explained what had gone wrong. Then he introduced the royal visitor to each of the engines. I heard about you all after the Queen came here many years ago, he told them. I am delighted to meet you for myself. The engines whistled loud and long. The royal passenger grinned and covered his ears. The Queen was right, he told the Fat Controller. Your railway and your engines are a credit to you.